Don't get out of there! Hello and welcome. It is the 22nd annual Garden State Film Festival. 200 films from over 14 countries all happening March 21st to the 24th this year. I am your host, Emily DeSimone, and I am here with director, writer, and the actress playing Lisa, Carrie Lynn Miller of the film, The Luckiest Man Alive. Thank you so much for joining me, Carrie. Can you give our live audience a bit about your film? Yes, I'm so happy to be here. This is great, Emily. Thank you so much for having me and interviewing me. Um, yeah, The Luckiest Man is about a woman who's preparing for her 10 year anniversary um, with the love of her life. And um, I'm just gonna say that for right now because I don't wanna give it away. <laughs> Ooh. Well, could you give maybe some insight into the inspiration that you had to make this? Yeah, film? absolutely. Um, so I was watching a short film uh, with some friends and it was basically about this older couple who um, were madly in love and the woman passed away and the husband kept bringing her after she was dead in her bed, kept bringing her um, breakfast in the morning and had a really hard time letting go of the love of his life and um, his kids were coming to take him to a nursing home and he had a hard time also like going to the next phase of his life so he ended up um, burying himself in the backyard with his wife um, because he just didn't want to go on and there was just something so touching about that because it's like we all know how it feels to have that one person that you know your life would just shatter without and um you know and we all have to deal with loss at some point in our lives and this character that i play um, has a really difficult time with that and it's really a study about denial and um that the pain of losing is so much worse than actually you know facing it so in, instead of facing it just to stay in denial is kind of what this character does could you tell us a bit about what this filming process was like, you know, filming such a, a deep emotional topic? Yeah, sure. Um, it was a lot of fun, actually, because it's it was a dark comedy, so it, it's very much rooted in truth. Um, but we were able to really go to extremes with it. So it was a lot of fun to do as an actor. Um, it was fun to write it, and um, it was really fun to direct it as well. I had a great group of people around me who um, really took hold of the vision so that when I was in front of the camera, um, I felt really safe and trusted that um, the vision was getting carried out. Um, but really, you know, it's just drop it, being able to wear, for me, the biggest challenge was, was being able to drop in as an actress and then also being able to um, switch hats when it comes to like directing or um, looking at, the, you know, the monitor and making sure that we get all the shots. So again, it was like so helpful to have such an amazing team around uh, around me because it just can't, it takes a village and you can't, you know, without them, it would have been nothing. <laughs> so it was great. Well, speaking of team, you know, where did you find, you know, your crew that helped you out with this and, you know, everyone that you worked with on this project? So the story, it was interesting. I wrote this story um, and I was talking to a good friend of mine, Neil Grabowski, who um, is in the industry. He's a gaffer. He's kind of like a jack of all trades. And um, he's got his own production company through the lens. And um, I was telling him about this and he was like, oh, this sounds like a really cool idea. Um, I want to pitch it to a couple of the people that I that he works with. So he um, pitched it to our producer, Tristan um, Stafford and everybody really seemed to um, jive with the idea and the story. So it was really happened so fast. It was like, you know, we had this script and then Neil came on board, then Tristan came on board. And the next thing I knew we were like, okay, look, this is the date, this is what we're doing. And it just kind of just, ste you know, steamrolled forward. So it was kind of just like a testament to like when it's ready and it's right, uh, the universe kind of puts it together for you. Um, so that's, it was kind of magical. I mean, speaking of magical, do you have a favorite part of the film or, or, or the process of it that like you would say was your favorite and maybe like your least favorite part of the process? Um, I think my favorite part was the scene between um, Matt Walton and I. Matt Walton's a fantastic actor. He was so good in this. Um, 
And there's a scene where we're in the shower and my character has um, a really bad migraine. And it's just a really touching scene between husband and wife of how well these two people were in tune with each other and knew, um, just knew when somebody was, when the other was feeling down and when to come in and kind of uplift them. So for me, that was like a really touching um, moment that gave us a good snapshot into the lives and the love of the characters. Um, so that was a touching scene for me and fun to play. And then one of the craziest um, scene was when I throw up because there's this moment. <laughs> so Tristan, our producer was like, yeah, you know, you got to really make it look real. So why don't you just chew this stuff up and like leave it. In <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I ran into the uh, bathroom to go vomit and I ended up slipping, hitting my head on my the It was so bad. I had like this mark on my forehead and it just like stuff went everywhere. And so that take, obviously we did not take, but that was probably my favorite part just because it was painful and it hurt. Um, but still, but comical now, um, telling it later. But <laughs> I mean, that's so funny that you say that because I mean, like, how many films are there bloopers where someone gets hurt and it gets thrown, you know, in? But I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> so, but, you know, with that said, it seems as though you've been doing this for quite some time. I mean, can you talk about your background in the film industry and, you know, where you come from and maybe uh, a challenge you've faced? in the film industry that's made you a stronger filmmaker now? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I kind of came into the industry much later. Um, I actually went to college to be a doctor. And um, I remember <laughs> I had to take this monologue class as an elective and I really just fell in love with, with acting. And so after I graduated, I went back to school at William Esper Studio and studied with Terry Knickerbocker um, in the Meisner program there and just fell in love with acting. And, um, you know, I started uh, doing some stuff like uh, guest stars and TV shows um, like Blue Bloods and um, some other shows. And then one thing kind of led to another where I found myself being really interested in storytelling and, and writing. And it was around that time I, I was pregnant. I got pregnant and, um, you know, I wasn't auditioning and stuff. So I was like, Oh, let me, let me try my hand at um, writing. And let me tell you, writing is hard. It is, I think the hardest thing that I've had to learn. And I had my tushy handed to me many a times at writers groups where, you know, I was working with people who were much more established, like nickel fellowship winners. And, you really just learn by the process of failing and being, you know, told what you're doing wrong and really learning structure and stuff. So that was a process for, for me to learn in order to be able to, um, to begin writing and, and storytelling. Um, this is my third short film. The first one, um, etymology, um, I produced and starred in. And then the last two I, um, wrote and directed and starred in. Um, so it's been like an evolution, but I think at the heart of it is, to, you know, I'm just a storyteller. I feel like I have a lot to say <laughs> um, and maybe not everybody always wants to listen to it at the times, but I, I just really enjoy expressing and connecting and um, it just lights my heart up whenever I get the opportunity to, to do that. Um, so, so yeah, I forget what your second part of the question was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, a challenge that you've faced in your time being a filmmaker that you think has made you, you know, stronger. Like I know you said that, you know, you've had your, your tush handed to you. And I mean, there is no, you know, I mean, there are successes without failures, but I mean, I feel like most successes come after failures, but I mean, like what, what is a piece of advice perhaps you could give to someone who's new and starting out a uh, challenge you faced that you overcame that made you stronger now? Yeah. Um, I would say many years ago as um, an actor, I signed on to do this feature film and it's so important to really know um, who you're working with and that these people, that the people you're working with have integrity. Um, to make a long story short, it was a, a film about bank robbers, like a team of bank robbers. And um, one of the folks was supposed to get a permit 
for Jersey City to let everybody know that we were going to be in a white unmarked van wearing masks and fake guns and um, and and get a permit for that. And they never got a permit. And I will never forget the day that I had a gun pointed at me um, because they thought that I was really like a bank robber. Um, so that was the scariest point in my life, but it also taught me such a huge lesson about when something feels off, just always going with your gut and really making sure that you're with people that you like and trust and that have integrity. Um, and don't be afraid to walk away from something because sometimes you go, oh, this is going to be my last thing and I'll, and I'll never get it. And I remember I admire um, one of the other actresses so much that she had um, – just the uh, confidence to say, this doesn't feel right. And she walked away and she's got this amazing career now. But I remember at the time feeling like, oh, maybe a little bit more like, oh, I needed to do this. And it was just something that I now know is to just, it doesn't, you just always have to trust your your gut and, and do, you know, work from a place of uh, what feels right. So I would just say that would be my advice to everyone is that even though sometimes you feel like you have to do all of these things to succeed, that to trust that if you just go the right way and trust your heart, that it will all work out. I'm still taken aback by your story. I mean, like, no, like absolutely. Like follow your gut, follow your dreams, go for it. And that is a story for the books. That is, <laughs> that is something you're going to tell forever. That is quite the story, but thank you so much for, for sharing um, that I'm still like in, <laughs> in shock over that. But I mean, um, so, you know, regarding The Luckiest Man Alive, what are your future plans for this film and perhaps any other works that you have in the making? Yeah. So The Luckiest Man Alive, we're, we have a great festival run. Um, we've already been in a lot of festivals. We're so excited about Garden State Film Festival. Um, and we have a bunch more um, after this. And we've even talked about turning it into a feature. We think it could be a lot of fun um, as a feature. Um, but I'm also working on a feature film called Awaken Her. And um, right now we're getting the budget ready and pretty much going out to um, cast very shortly, hoping to film um, in July 2024. And that film I'm really excited about. It's kind of like a reverse coming of age story um, that's set in the plastic surgery world. And it deals with themes of, you know, addiction, body dysmorphia. And we follow... Um, our protagonist, Catherine, as she is getting ready for her 20 year high school reunion, where she's going to have to face um, the original sin or trauma that kind of set her off into her addiction, uh, body dysmorphia type um, spiral. And through that, she also journeys with um, her inner child, if you will, slash new friend um, that's kind of walking her through this journey. So I'm really excited about it. And um, hoping that we start casting very soon. That sounds like an amazing story, something that I hope to hear about soon. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, you guys, you can you can check out The Luckiest Man Alive at the Asbury Hotel on Saturday, March 23rd during the 2.30 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. block. Carrie, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I feel like this has been such a fun interview with you like there have been so many different like dynamics to this um i do hope to see you at the garden state film festival this year where there are 200 films screening across eight venues including hosting parties panels events and more guys get your tickets at gsff.org tickets i'm your host emily de simone and i hope you have a great rest of your day carrie again thank you so much oh thank you so much emily thank you everyone hope to see you soon <laughs>